the purpose of this video is to talk about the topic of noise campaigns as it pertains to organized stalking and harassment. I became aware of the overt nature of the stalking and harassment against me back in 2015. Late 2015 is when I began documenting the evidence of the campaigns that were being used against me. These campaigns included everything from vehicular stalking, vandalism, color sensitization, harassment, and noise campaigns. These campaigns as we call them in the targeted individual community are basically tactics used by our enemies in an effort to control our mental and emotional states. This is known in psychology as, neurolinguistic programming technique. Basically, you could call this mind control. One method they use to actively achieve this state of control is by anchoring. Anchoring is when these perpetrators introduce a specific stimulus into the target's life on a repeated basis in order to control your mental and emotional state, which over a period of time becomes a trigger. Because organized stalking and harassment is abusive in nature, the tactics of NLP are abused and used to induce trauma in an individual. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, today's topic is about noise campaigns, and more specifically speaking, first responder sirens. I was inspired to do this video based off my own personal experience. In the beginning of my targeting I would notice that fire trucks, ambulances, and EMT vehicles would frequently drive past my apartment multiple times per day with sirens blowing. So, the first thing I noticed was the frequency in their presence. Secondly, I started noticing they would turn their sirens on just as they reached my building and then turn them off immediately after passing. Finally. I noticed a change in the sound of the sirens they were using. They started using a siren sound that was very low in tone and menacing to say the least. Outside of my neighborhood, this is not a sound I had ever heard used by first responders. To make a long story short, until today, I never knew what this type of siren was or what its intended purpose was. However, in the next few clips I will share with you exactly what it sounds like, what it does and its intended purpose. Emphasis on, intended. Before we go further I would just like to point out, like the majority of people, when you hear the term first responders, you immediately think of helpers during emergencies. The first people you call is 911 in an emergency, right? These are the people that protect and serve, right? Here is the first responder by Homeland Security definition. The term first responder refers to those individuals who in the early stages of an incident are responsible for the protection and preservation of life, property, evidence, and the environment, including emergency response providers as defined in Section 2 of the Homeland Security Act of 2002, as well as emergency management, public health, clinical care, public works, and other skilled support personnel, such as equipment operators that provide immediate support services during prevention, response, and recovery operations. Now, let's see the examples I want to share with you of the type of sirens I have experienced in the noise campaigns used against me. Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sirenet Television. We're going to take a look at a product from Whelan Engineering in Chester, Connecticut. It happens to be the Whelan Howler Siren Amplifier Kit. It's available here on Sirenet. But anyway, let me explain how this works. Basically, these two domes that I've got my hands on right now, these happen to be the actual speakers and driver concept. In other words, there's a, a driver inside here so basically the two units would be placed in the front wheel well area of a vehicle, left and right side. Each speaker goes one on one side, one on the other. That also comes with a box like this. This is an electronics box. I'm avoiding using the word amplifier, although it is an amplifier in its own right. This system is a supplementary siren amplification system. In other words, it's not a primary system. It's designed to work in conjunction 
with a Whelan primary siren amplificator. We have purchased for our new vehicles a siren that not only will be heard but can be felt. The idea is with the vehicles designed the way they are nowadays, it's a little harder for the regular siren tones that are on emergency vehicles to penetrate these vehicles. What this howler does is it lowers those tones to where there's a vibrate, vibrating sensation. Vibrating sensation, lower frequency sound seems to penetrate these vehicles better. So it makes the motorist aware that there's an oncoming emergency vehicle coming to an intersection or down the road. You can't feel it, but this siren is emitting a vibration. It's felt by drivers and passengers and it alerts them of an oncoming fire truck. A firefighter's foot is applied to the switch on the floor. It's set for an eight second burst of low frequency vibration that can be felt up to a city block radius. People have quite an ability these days to tune out uh, sirens and alarms because we do have a lot of false alarms around the city. It's like a boom box or low vibrational. So people are actually being drawn a great awareness to it. They are now moving out of the way more accordingly in a safe, faster manner so we can get to where we need to go to whoever has called 911. The Howler Siren is a pilot project that the Vancouver Fire and Rescue Service is currently working on and seriously considering purchasing. Well, so far, polling our uh, crews at the fire hall number eight that have been using this, they have found it to be extremely effective and they're quite happy. Again, used, to, used with moderation and in the appropriate areas. And used to use with moderation and in the appropriate areas. Busy intersections like this one at Granville and 11 are examples of high traffic areas where the new howler siren could be useful. In conclusion, I would like to point out that there are many genuine targeted individuals that have made mention of being harassed by first responders. As a disclaimer, I would like to add that. I created this video to demonstrate what I personally experience when it comes to noise campaigns and organized stalking and harassment. I am not, I repeat, I am not against first responders that are honestly just doing their job. However, as with any occupation or organization, it would be foolish to believe that there aren't some individuals holding these positions, that lack the integrity expected of them. With that being said, these departments such as, fire and police are funded by tax dollars, therefore are held accountable by those in which they are sworn to protect and serve. As first responders, every time they are dispatched to a call, there is a log of it that includes the date and time of calls for service. Also included in this log is the location of the incident and the type of incident. It is important to understand that this information is considered public records and are therefore disclosable. It's important to check the details of the law according to your own city, state, or country. As a targeted individual, it is a known fact that we must document everything for our own evidence and protection as it pertains to organized stalking and harassment. For example, if a person suspected they were being harassed by their local first responders and officials, and they were able to present audio and visual evidence of these events in a lawsuit, the department would have to provide evidence that these officials and official vehicles were in fact, being used for official business at those documented times, official business such as, actually responding to an emergency call that had been dispatched. This is not about stirring up trouble with first responders, this is about not breaking the trust in which the people of the communities have placed in them.